Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.5.1 was released to the public today. This is available to all iOS 13 supported devices. So that means the iPhone 6s and later, as well as the iPad air two and later and iPad mini four and later, as well as iPod touch seventh generation. Now, if you haven't received this update and maybe you received iOS 13.5.5 beta, you would need to uninstall the beta profile. So if you are a beta tester, you would want to go into settings, go to general scroll to the bottom, and you'll have a word that says profile here, go into profile and remove it. And then you'll be able to check for software update and it will be there. Now iOS 13.5.1 came in at 77.5 megabytes on my iPhone 11 pro max. And it was as small as about 50 megabytes or so, depending on the device. So I have the iPhone seven, the iPhone 10 R and the iPad pro 12.9 from 2020. Now let's take a look at the build number. The build number is 17 F eight zero. And this particular build is all about one thing. And Apple also released similar updates for not only iOS, but also watch OS 6.2.6 TV OS 13.4.6. HomePod OS 13.4.6 and also Mac OS 10.15.5 supplemental update. So with this update, iOS 13.5.1 has no modem update. So there's no modem fixes, nothing to cellular data or Wi-Fi that I could find. And it has one specific feature that's included, and that is to fix the jailbreak. So if you were using iOS 13.5 with the uncover jailbreak, that has been patched. In fact, Apple calls, calls that out specifically as far as security updates, as far as preventing that. So it says an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges or access to the operating system itself. And so they've patched that on all of these devices. And that's what this update was all about. Every time there is a jailbreak that's considered a security vulnerability and Apple needs to patch that. And so they've patched it on not only iPhone, but watch or Apple watch as well as iPad TV, HomePod, Mac as well. And so that is the main fix. Don't expect any new features, no major changes within this update. There's nothing new as far as that goes. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean they haven't patched other things. Although this, the update was so small, it's hard to say if they fixed anything with mail as far as notifications. I know quite a few people were having problems with notifications coming in, including myself. Sometimes they're hit or miss mail. As far as letting me know that I have email, I go into it, it has to recheck. So those are all known bugs that I've seen over and over. And I'm not sure if they'll be patched with this. Only a few days will tell me that. So I did try a few different things on these devices. I'll talk about in a moment, but let's talk about battery life. Then we'll talk about performance and then also future iOS versions as well as iOS 14. So as far as battery life is concerned, I did a follow-up video on iOS 13.5 the other day and 71% said they had the same or better battery life than the previous public version. Now, some people, of course, those that are having bad battery life are going to be more outspoken about that. And you can see my battery health is 98% after this update. Now updates do not decrease your battery health. They simply recheck the physical battery to see how it's doing and all batteries degrade over time. So until someone releases a new battery that doesn't degrade over time. This will continue to be a thing on all phones, all devices that use batteries. Now, over the past 10 days, you can see here is my usage and there was a little bit of a hiccup there, but over the past 10 days, here's my usage. So it varies depending on the day. This day was a little bit better. So three hours and 43 minutes of screen on time, two hours and 54 minutes of screen off time. And I used about 40% of my battery. So I'm getting about 10 to 12 hours combined with both screen on and screen off time, which is basically playing music in the background with the display off. So it's having activities going on with the display off. And that's usually what that is. So battery life has been fine for me. I'm happy with it, but obviously there's some that aren't. So hopefully it fixes any of those small issues. Now, as far as performance, you saw that, that small little hiccup there when I went into battery, but it could be doing something in the background and it usually improves over time. And we'll take a look at the benchmarks in a moment. But before I started making this video or recording this video, I took a look at this iPhone seven. This is a jet black iPhone seven. It's a kind of a limited color. It looks just like an iPhone eight, but it's not. And if we go into things like music, You'll see it takes a moment to load, but in general, I went in I went into things like settings just to see how it would scroll. And I had no lockups in the time that I've been playing around with it. it seems to be okay, but only time will tell just like battery. Now, as far as 
iPhone XR, the same thing is true. I would not expect any performance difference across any of these devices because this is a security update as opposed to a feature update. There's nothing new. They just patched that small security hole, or actually it's a pretty major security hole. The same is true with iPad OS. iPad OS did not get any updates other than that security patch. So if you were having issues with it, unfortunately, I would not necessarily expect them to be patched, but only time will tell as far as that goes. But again, everything seems to feel fast and fluid when going through this. So it looks to be okay. Now, as far as the Geekbench scores or benchmarks, let's take a look at them. I ran it in Geekbench 5 like I normally do. So if you're seeing much higher scores, you may be in a previous version. But I scored 1,317 for single core, 3,361 for multi-core. And keep in mind, I run these right after I install the update. And it takes time usually for things to happen in the background. But I do make, make sure the phones are cool. So usually they're a little bit warm after you update because they're processing a lot of data. So you can see on June 1st versus May 19th, the scores are a little bit lower, but again, I ran this right after installing it. So keep in mind, these scores could go up, but they're close enough that I really wouldn't pay attention to it. It's usually good enough. Now let's take a look at all of these devices so you can compare what I have with what you have. Now from left to right, I have the 2020 iPad Pro 12.9, followed by the iPhone 7, then the iPhone 10 R and then the iPhone 11 pro max. So this should give you a general idea of what your scores are. And if they're anywhere in this general range, you should be good to go. Now, Apple is continuing to work on iOS 13 and will continue to work on it probably until next year, as far as security updates. Now I would not expect any major feature changes, but while I was making this video, iOS 13.5.5 beta one was released. So I'll have a video on that as well. So hopefully there's something new in there, but don't expect any major new features until iOS 14, which should come out to beta testers in a couple of weeks on the 22nd. So I'm looking forward to that. So on the 22nd is WWDC and I would expect iOS 14 with many new features and things like that. Hopefully a lot more stability as well, but of course I'll keep you updated on that. If you found anything else in iOS 13.5.1, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.